Hello, welcome to my colouring tutorial. My name's Michelle Tracy. In part two of this tutorial series, I'll show you how to colour in her face with Copics, pastels and pencils. This page is from my book Totem Animals and it is available from Amazon and Etsy. All the links are in the description below for you. I'm putting my art to good use and I'm supporting Stand Up Speak Out during November. It's a national campaign which prevents men's violence against women and girls and 50% of the proceeds of this tiger colouring page will go to White Ribbon when you purchase it from Etsy. So thank you so much for participating. All countries are welcome. Thanks for making a difference. So I'm approaching this part two tutorial the same way I approached part one. I'm using the Copic markers first as a foundation layer because they are very vibrant. So I am leaving a bit of the white along the bridge of the nose there because I want that to be a highlight. And it's easier to leave white rather than have to add it later. So just working really quickly to so I don't have any streaks forming. And while it's still wet, I am applying the fuchsia because I've got to blend the two together and they do blend wet on wet. So just working rather fast to do that and working on small areas it's much easier because the paint it stays wet. You can see I'm going backwards and forwards between the two. Often you'll see there that I wet it the yellow again before I apply that pink. And you don't have to get perfect blends at this stage because just like in part one, I am going to use the pastel pencils over the top of this so that I can get softer transitions and softer blends between the two colours. I had to make the decision here, do I continue with the pink or do I go straight into the yellow because one of them, I'm probably going to have a streak forming because it takes so long by the time I get back around here. So I went with the yellow just so I could get that softer blend. But you can see that there is a bit of a streak on the pink. That That's what happens, that's how quick you have to work. But it, it'll just have to stay, there's not much I can do about that. Oh well, imperfections can just be your little artist touch. I'm just extending some of that pink in. I, I just didn't want that hard edge a bit. I will do the hair in part three. So we'll worry, we'll get into that part later. Now I'm using this cream orange, it's the Derwent Studio Pencil, it's not a pastel, only because I found this was more brighter. And um, if you've got a, a fantastic orange pastel pencil, by all means use it. And I'm just going around um, all the stripes and the lines there using quite a firm pressure and just um, lightening the pressure as I reach the yellow. So it's a firmer press pressure closer to the black line and it just softens as it goes into the yellow. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend into the yellow at this stage because I will do what I did before by then applying a yellow pastel pencil over the top just on the edge to soften it. And you can see that I have left some sections there that is for the pink 
pastel that will go over it. The pink pastel doesn't apply very well over this orange, so I'm just having to, over the pencil, so I'm just leaving some areas. Now here I've got the zinc yellow, I'm just blending that in. The yellow matches perfect with the Copic, so I'm really pleased with that. And it's a little bit hard to see, sorry I couldn't zoom in anymore because of the Im image quality, but when you do it you'll see that that just softens really nicely. And there are little bits of excess pastel sitting on the paper, so I, I get in and use that stump blender in my finger to try and work it into the paper. When you work it into the paper, there's less pastel sitting on your page that you have to blow off. So now, now I'm creating these soft blends, the transition between the pink and the yellow. I'm using the pastel pencils and I'm just um, rotating between the two yellow and pink. And then you can just blend it again with the, um, the stump blenders there. I've to, I have attempted to match that pink and it, it's matched quite well with the Copic so I'm pretty pleased with that. It doesn't matter if it's not com perfect, it, it's, still, it's still pretty good. No, so they are hard edges, quite hard edges, so I'm going to go around the entire section where the yellow meets the pink Copic, just to <laughs> kind of soften her so she doesn't look, look so harsh and scary. I mean, if you were using Copics that were closer in tonal values, like two light shades, you wouldn't you wouldn't really need to use the pastel on top because they would just blend beautifully. Or if you were to use two mid tone colors, it would do the same. Yeah, I just realised I'd oh, I'd forgotten to do that part, so I just it really needed to be softer. It was quite harsh. Stump blender, I'm just working it in the yellow in so I don't have to blow it away. Now just using the R20 blush Copic, just on the ears, the ears are quite pink so I'm going to use that. Now I'm making sure that I do leave the white there because there are white highlights and with this colourless blender, I'm just putting over the top of the pink just to soften it into that white page, whiteness of the page. Wet the paper first with the blender and then I can apply the pink over it. You can see how that just then softens and you don't get those real hard edges. So that's the same pink I've used on the lips. And just using that yellow Copic for the highlights to bring some of that colour back in. Now for the shadows, just that fuchsia. And I'm applying it whilst the Copic underneath is still wet. It's starting to dry now so I've just had to re-wet it with the pink before I apply the, the shadow again. You know, I'm always looking for ways to improve my colouring tutorials and I'm so interested to see what and to learn what you all look for in a colouring tutorial. So I would love it if you could leave some feedback in the comments and I can take it on board for next time. Now a pastel pencil, the purple, just getting in there to the darkest shadows around the hairline and softening it into the pink there. 
as you can see I'm, I'm using the same colors I've used on the tiger it basically it's all the same techniques it's just repeating it and applying it to skin which yes skin's more challenging I find because it's smooth and there's not a lot of room for mistakes you can tell when something's not going quite well whereas with animals you know it can cover it up with fur it's just how they are but I'm just going all around that hairline around the ear as a shadow see how the purple and the pink blend well because they're both they're quite dark and they're also harmonious colors don't forget around the lip there shadows don't necessarily start at the very edge you can see that I've brought that shadow in so they're still pink around the outside and that's that's basically because that there's reflected light and that reflected light is on the very outer edge of her facial line the same on the neck there it kind of I feel it does give it a bit more of a 3d effect rather than um, if I had have started the purple right at that edge it's easy to use your finger here, it's a large area, I prefer it. Don't forget the teeth, just put a bit of that purple on it it's already on the stump blender so it's fine to just do it that way some yellow highlight just like the tiger you can basically just go off the tigers um, as a reference point at this stage Stump blenders are great for fine areas. I'm just fiddling around now, fine tuning. You don't have to be this perfect. And I am introducing a new pink here. It's Crimson Lake, and it's I've just matched it to that. R20 blush because I just needed to soften it a bit more so I'm basically just doing the same thing where I'm extending the Copic but with the pastel I'm just being picky you don't even really need to now just with the black just color it in take your time I certainly did that's why I haven't shown at all it looks amazing once you get these black in it's really exciting make sure it's dry before you apply these highlights now I'm just mirroring the same effect as the tiger there you can see I'm putting it in the exactly the same spot as I have on the tiger And I wanted some more white up there and it just was looking flat to me it needed some tonal value so a white pastel pencil it blends quite easily into the yellow I would have liked it a bit brighter but that's as bright as I could get and that's it so I hope you've enjoyed part two of this tutorial. Stay tuned for part three. I'll show you how to colour in a hair and the background. See you next time. Thanks for watching.